Hey guys, what's up, Roman here from Tech Guides, and in this video, I'd like to share with you five hidden Windows 10 settings or features that I personally cannot live without. So starting with number one, on any new Windows 10 installation, I immediately have to change the default Windows sounds. So I'm sure most of you are familiar with these annoying sounds that are played back by Windows if you're trying to search for something on a page that is not there, if you're trying to change the Windows volume, if you get notifications or if you try to install a program. Luckily, changing these obnoxious sounds is super easy. Click on the Start menu, type in Change System Sounds, and here you want to look for any events associated with the background wave. Go ahead and replace it with the startup sound. It sounds like this. Also, I'm no big fan of the foreground wave sound. So I generally replace the asterisk sound, the critical stop, critical alarm, default beep, system notification, and exclamation sound. Furthermore, I like to change the notification sound as well as the Windows user account control sound. This plays whenever you try to install some software. Now let's have a listen at the result. Much better. Now number two concerns disabling the Windows login. Now I personally am in a private environment here, so nobody really has access to my computer and therefore I don't really see much of a point in setting up a password on my computer. Obviously I still have an administrator password, however, whenever I boot up my computer I don't want to enter that password to get onto Windows. In order to disable the annoying login screen, click on the start menu, type in netplwiz, which will actually only show up as a program once you've typed in the entire string and disable users must enter a username and password to use this computer for the administrator user. Click on apply and enter your password. And that's it, upon the next reboot of your computer, you are no longer asked to enter your password to get into Windows. However, you have to be aware that anybody with physical access to your computer is now going to be able to log on to your PC. So really only do this if you know that nobody will have physical access to your computer. Tip number three concerns getting a fully fledged Linux installation running on top of your Windows machine. Now this might come in handy if you're used to working with Linux and you want to perform some tasks that are simply much easier to perform in Linux compared to Windows. So to get Linux running on top of your Windows machine, click on the start menu, go to turn Windows features on or off, browse all the way to the bottom and enable the Windows subsystem for Linux. Now after you hit OK, you're gonna have to restart your computer. Next, click on the Start menu again and go to the Microsoft Store. Here you want to search for Ubuntu 18.04 Long-Term Support. Click on it and click on Install. Note you're actually not required to log in here. Next, click on Start. After the final installation step, you are now prompted to enter a Unix username and password which will be used for your Linux machine. And that's it, you can now use Linux on top of your Windows machine. However, I personally don't really like the standard CMD terminal and therefore I would also highly recommend you to install the Windows Terminal Preview app from the Microsoft Store, which is basically a much improved CMD terminal. Once installed, you want to click on the drop down icon and click on settings. Here you want to change the default profile from the Windows PowerShell one to the Ubuntu 1804 profile. After restarting the Windows terminal, you will then be greeted by the regular Linux shell. As an example of one of the many cool things that you can do in Linux, I'd like to show you how easy it is to find a string in a text file on Linux. So let's assume I'd like to look for this ggplot string in the bench.r file. If I'm looking for this in Windows, then I'm simply getting no results, even though I indexed all of my files. On Linux, you can simply browse to the correct directory and type in grep dash rwn dot dash e followed by the search string in quotation marks 
And as you can see, it immediately finds the bench.r file. If you want to see a video on what I would consider the most important and useful Linux commands, then definitely tell me so in the comments below and smash that like button. Vice versa, if you want to access your Linux files in Windows, then you can simply type in backslash backslash WSL dollar backslash Ubuntu 1804 in the address bar, which will grant you access to all of the Linux subsystem files. Note that in a future Windows build, which is currently only available in the Insider Preview, you will be able to natively access all of your Linux files within the Windows Explorer. With tip number 4, I'd like to introduce you to the new and improved snipping tool. Now, presumably you're all well familiar with the old snipping tool. You can access it by clicking on the Start menu and typing Snipping Tool. However, using the old snipping tool was a bit clunky. You always had to click on New to get a new snip and then save it. Um, and there is actually a much improved version out there. You can bring it up by pressing Shift, Windows and the S key. Once opened, you're presented with four different options to create your snips. The first is the regular snipping tool, so you can just select a part of your screen. You can then click on the notification, mark stuff or even highlight things on the snip that you've created. For example, that I'm close to 20k subs, so definitely hit that subscribe button if you like this kind of content and you want to support my channel. You can then save created snips as either a JPEG, GIF or PNG. The fourth mode is basically a glorified print screenshot mode, so it basically just makes a screenshot of the entire screen, but you obviously get the option to save it much faster than going over a secondary program. Next, the third mode allows you to snip a program that you click on using your mouse. So as you can see, this is much faster than with the old snipping tool. You just press Shift, Windows, S, click on the window that you'd like to snip, and it's already saved in the clipboard. Finally, with the second option, you can also freeform cut something out of your screen and then save it as a PNG with a transparent background. And finally, in my last tip, I'd like to show you a few shortcuts using the Windows key that should greatly improve your productivity. First of all, if you're working with a large screen, for example a 1440p or 4K screen, then you can resize windows using the Windows key and the left or right key. This will make the currently selected window to fill up the entire half left or right side of your screen and you're then also presented with the option to fill the other half of your monitor with another program. Note that these programs don't exactly have to take up half of your screen. You can just simply resize them by pressing in the middle of the two programs and dragging that to the right or left. Furthermore, you can also press Windows Up to maximize windows and Windows Down to minimize them. Another super convenient functionality of the Windows key is that you can actually access different programs in the order that you have started them. So in my example, if I press the Windows and one key, then Thunderbird is gonna open. If I press Windows N2, then Chrome will open. Note if you have multiple instances of the same program running, then you can actually tap through the different instances by repeatedly pressing Windows and the number associated with this program. If I press Windows 3, then I generally open the Windows Explorer. And from there on out, I can just access the programs in the order that I launched them by pressing Windows and number 4 to 9. Finally, you can insert emojis in pretty much any program that allows text input by pressing Windows and the dot key. Some other shortcuts that I think are absolutely vital to know when you're using Windows are Control shift escape to bring up the Task Manager, Alt-Tab to tap through different programs, and similarly, if you're inside of Chrome, you can also tap through the different tabs by pressing Control shift tab or Control tab to go in the right or left direction through your tabs. But that about sums up today's video. If you learned something new, then smash that like button. And if you have some other secret Windows 10 tips or features, then definitely tell me so in the comments below. Also, if you don't want to miss out on part 2, then don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. But that's it for today guys, thank you so much for watching, have a wonderful day and I will see you guys in the next video.